What exactly is infinity? And does infinity exist? The literal meaning of infinite is not finite. It is also claimed that infinite means endless. But can something that's endless really be not finite? In ancient Greece, Aristotle distinguished between these two meanings by calling one of them actual and the other potential. The claim is that something is potentially infinite if elements can always be added to it. So it appears to capture the infinite property of never ending, whilst avoiding the need to have to do an infinite amount of something. But something can't be potentially infinite if the ability to keep adding might come to an end, and so this endlessness approach requires time as well as the ability to keep adding to be actually infinite. Another example of endlessness is a circular running track. It has no end point, but it can't be described as not finite. Yet another example of endlessness is when we get into an endless loop when following a set of instructions. When the execution of a computer program does this, it is called an infinite loop. But we can't go around that loop a not finite amount of times. The instructions are entirely finite, and so is every attempt to follow them. The ancient Greek philosopher Democritus argued that there couldn't be infinitely many of anything, and that everything must consist of a finite number of indivisible parts, which they called atoms. But it's hard to imagine how some things cannot be infinite, like the universe. If the universe comes to an end, then what's beyond the end? And how can time not be infinite? At first, these examples appear to support the concept of infinity but we need to examine these things further. Take the problem of what's beyond the end of the universe. If matter is physical material, and what we call empty space is also physical material, being made up of lots of smallest parts of space, then we can say the whole universe consists of physical material. It follows that outside of the universe there is no space, no distance, no anything. Therefore there is no such thing as beyond the extremities of our universe. There is not even a place that we can call outside the universe, because of the complete absence of all properties such as distance or volume. This logic has to be considered a bit dubious for two reasons. There is nothing in the real world that we can point to as being an example of this phenomenon. And so in that sense, it is a metaphysical argument. And how exactly can there be an absence of all properties outside the universe? The very idea sounds absurd. So perhaps the idea that the universe is infinite is less absurd than it being finite. But we know the distance between any two points in the universe must be finite. And if all distances between any two parts of the universe are finite, then there can't be an infinite distance within the universe. It would then seem absurd to claim the universe is infinite. But we could ignore this and claim that an infinite distance can contain only finite distances. This is analogous to the argument that an infinite set of counting numbers can exist containing only finite values. So we would be taking our lead from fictitious mathematics. We would be saying that perhaps the real world, the real universe, reflects our made-up mathematical concepts. Again, the logic has to be considered a bit dubious. Because there's no real world example of an infinite thing, let alone one consisting of just finite things. And can we really just ignore the apparent absurdity? Now consider time. Can that not be finite? Well, time is movement. It is what we say takes place when parts of space or matter in the universe change position. If we examine a timeline of time, then time started when movement started in the universe. 
At any point in time, only a finite amount of time will have transpired. And in the future, maybe all movement will cease and time will come to an end. So we can explain how time can start and end, but we can't explain how a not finite amount of time can ever occur. It is easy to say that something can go on forever, but since we can't explain how it would occur, the claim that time is infinite is highly dubious. Next we have the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Given that there's no biggest number, you might think that therefore there must be infinitely many of them. But a robot with a computer for a brain can use counting numbers because numbers are created within the computer as and when required. They don't have their own out-of-computer existence. So why should the human brain handle numbers differently to a robot? Why aren't numbers in-brain objects that are created as and when required? If they are, then with a finite number of brains, there can only ever be a finite amount of numbers. Mathematicians can use the word infinity, but all of mathematics is finite, in that it involves a finite amount of symbols interpreted by a finite amount of brain cells. It is claimed that maths depends on definitions and rules and not on physical reality. So the simple act of walking from one place to another could be modelled mathematically as a supertask consisting of infinitely many smaller journeys. Such an approach might be considered successful for predicting that other journeys could be completed. But this apparent success does not make it a valid approach for modelling reality. Mathematics should be able to accommodate any amount that does exist in the real world, and a lot of people trust their intuition where infinity is concerned. Even the brilliant analyst Bertrand Russell accepted that infinitely many things probably exist in the real world on the basis that a finite amount of things seems unlikely. He said, We wish to define number in such a way that infinite numbers may be possible. Thus we must be able to speak of the number of terms in an infinite collection. It appears that the majority of our intellectual giants can't stop themselves from believing in the infinite. Perhaps numbers are merely represented within computers and brains, and they really can be said to have their own existence. So let's examine the claim that we can imagine non-physical things like numbers. If we form a mental picture of two cats on the moon, then obviously it doesn't mean that it's true that there are two cats on the moon, but the mental image does exist. It has a physical presence in the chemistry of the brain. And whether we are counting two imagined cats or two real cats, the number two forms part of the description. So the number only exists inside the brain. When we see the written symbol for the number three, we recognise it as representing a numeric quantity. But if all thinking entities such as brains and intelligent machines suddenly stopped working, would the symbol still represent a numeric quantity? It takes a thinking entity to assign meaning to a symbol, and so without any thinking entities, the symbol would just be a meaningless collection of atoms. But what about numbers out there in the universe? Such as eight planets in our solar system, or six electrons in a carbon atom. Even without any thinking entities, these numbers would still exist, wouldn't they? But since it requires a thinking entity to define what a numeric count refers to, to store the concept as data, and to be aware of its meaning, then even though the physical stuff will obviously still exist, the description of that stuff will not exist, and numbers are part of the description. Numbers are created by thinking entities. They are not out there in the universe. It's the same with patterns. 
Without thinking entities, there are no patterns. Patterns are not out there in the universe. A pattern has no physical existence of its own. This is a very difficult argument to grasp. Patterns are a brain-based interpretation of data. The physical stuff exists, but the identification of patterns is part of our internal data processing. We found that numbers don't exist as symbols and they don't have their own existence in the natural world. But they do exist within thinking entities. This leads to the following logic concerning how many numbers exist. Since there can only ever be a finite number of thinking entities, and since any thinking entity only has a finite amount of storage, it follows that only a finite amount of numbers can ever exist. But most mathematicians are formalists. They believe mathematics is just a game we play with symbols and rules. They believe these symbols and rules are not subject to physical limitations. They claim this allows for an infinite number of expressions. But we have already seen that even our imagination is physical in nature, and so it is subject to physical limitation. So there can only ever be a finite supply of real or imagined symbols, and if you think otherwise, then you must be deluding yourself. You can't demonstrate or even explain how this limitlessness can occur without first assuming an actual infinity of material or time or both. It would be nice to think that we can keep increasing from a finite quantity to a bigger but still finite quantity forever. But the word forever implies an actual infinity of both time and material. So it is impossible to show how infinitely many symbols can occur without first assuming an actual infinity can occur. Occasionally, a mathematician will rise to the challenge of showing how infinitely many can be achieved within a finite time and with a finite amount of material. Their solution goes something like this. We can construct a computer to set x equals 0 at time 0, then set it to 1 at time a half, 2 at time 3 quarters, 3 at time 7 eighths, 4 at time 15 sixteenths, and so on. It follows that when time equals 1, the computer will have set x to all infinitely many natural numbers. They will claim that everything here is well defined. And we could protest that they've assumed time is infinitely divisible or that this is delusional because it can't happen in the real world. But there is an even easier way to defeat this argument. A mathematician's theoretical computer is a Turing machine which performs one operation at a time. So when time equals 1, we could stop the machine and step back through its instructions to find out the last number it processed. This contradicts the concept of infinitely many which requires there to be no last number. Of course the mathematicians could invent a new rule that says we are not allowed to step back through the machine's instructions and then claim everything is consistent once again but that would just show how utterly ridiculous mathematics is with its make-believe objects and its made-up rules. And so is there any reason why we should accept the concept of infinity? Well, just because finite things exist, it doesn't follow that non-finite things must exist, even if we think that we can imagine them. Mathematics professor Norman Weilberger claims that non-finite is just a grammatical construction in the same way that an immovable kitten is just a grammatical construction. And so apart from the desire to believe in weird and strange things, there's no good reason to accept the belief that infinity is a coherent or meaningful concept.